welcome. This is my get up for work. This is what I look like. So I have my loops on so that I can see. It's got my light on it. I have my nice little scrub cap. Thank you, COVID, and my super warm surgical gown. And this is my patient here. So we are going to get started today. We are going to do a cleaning. So I'm going to kind of show you the steps that we do for it and the different things that we use. And yeah, so let's dive right in. to the dental office today. I'm so glad that you're here. I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. Thank you to everyone who has commented. I've actually had quite a few people who've reached out and said um, that they've struggled with going to the dentist or that they didn't really know how to brush or floss. And um, so I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you. If you have any other thoughts or comments, if you have questions about dental topics, feel free to let me know. Um, that's why I'm here, that's why I'm doing this. I joined YouTube. Uh, kind of in COVID so that I could go out there and um, teach people and educate people. So I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to those of you who have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. If you have any thoughts or ideas on what you want for new topics, let me know below. Yeah, so let's dive right in. So the first thing I'm going to grab is this stuff right here. This is called a disclosing solution or agent. What it is, is it's a purple dye that will stick to any of the spots that we have plaque on our teeth. So we've got our little micro brush, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paint it onto the surfaces of the teeth. So normally you would do the full mouth for the video. I'm just gonna do this a little bit on this corner so that you can see how it works. All right, so as you can see, before we rinse it, it basically stains all the teeth a nice deep purple color. So we'll grab our air water syringe. This is our air water syringe and our saliva ejector. And we're just gonna rinse it. Cool, so we don't spray everywhere. show you now is any of the places where you have that deep pink color is where it's actually stained where you have plaque so you can see on her she still has some plaque in between some of these teeth here that needs to be removed so that's what we're going to focus on when we're teaching you how to brush or floss properly these are the areas that you need to really focus on so in your case it's right in between the teeth really important to keep that nice and super clean which is a common area for most of us it's hard to get it clean back there Okay, so a lot of the times that we start with a cleaning, what we start off with is something called an ultrasonic, or in this case, I have a Cavitron, another one's called a Piezo. What it does is it helps us to remove any hardened plaque called calculus that's on your teeth. So if you try and get rid of it at home, it's just not gonna work, it's not gonna go anywhere um, because you can brush and brush and brush and brush, but we actually need to go in mechanically and remove it with some of the instruments that we have in the dental office. So this one's great because it actually tends to vibrate and it has an ultrasonic motion to it where it will help to remove any of that calculus it's really hard to get. It also sprays a lot of water, so it's cooling, so it makes you less sensitive when you're getting it done. Okay, so we are gonna just turn this down a little bit for you, because you don't have a ton of calculus, and we will get started. So let me know if it's tender or painful, if there's any spots. A couple spots where your gums are bleeding might be a little bit more tender, just because they're a little bit inflamed, okay? But if it's too much, just raise your hand, or if you need a break, just let me know. So 
as you probably noticed, it's super annoying to listen to. It's really high pitched, a lot of people don't like it. Actually, I find that probably 50-50, 50% of people hate the sound of the cavatron, the high pitched squeal. The other 50% of people hate the sound of you scraping on their teeth with a hand instrument, which we will do in a little bit. So make sure that you bring some kind of headphones or music or something to listen to that you enjoy so you don't have to listen to this. So lots of the time after you're done with the ultrasonic, I think research shows that about 90% of plaque bacteria calculus can be removed by the ultrasonic, but sometimes it's important to get back in there old fashioned with a good old hand instrument and scrape off the remaining calculus. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so at any point during the cleaning, your hygienist might stop or might reevaluate. She might pull out a, or he, she or he, might pull out a periodontal explorer. What this is used for is to help try and find if there's any spots of calculus that's still remaining, or tartar buildup, or whatever you want to call it, on the teeth. So what we do with that is you basically, it's just like our fingers, just really many. So you're just gonna feel around the tooth for any spots that it might catch, and any spots that it might catch, let us know that there's still something stuck on the tooth. So we just do a quick check of that. You can do the full mouth. And then following that, what you're gonna do is the polish. Now polish is good for removing stains. It also helps to just kind of buff the surface texture of the teeth, which makes it less likely for them to catch food and bacteria and plaque in the future. So I have blue raspberry. I'm gonna use the polishing piece that we have today. Mm. And what we're gonna do is similar to the ultrasonic where we clean. We just want to go all the way around the shape of the tooth. So I'm going to start on the bottom here just to show you. And we're just going to buff out any stain, any extra surface, anything that's on the tooth. And we just want to make sure that they're really nice and clean. Bring it all angles. This is always my favorite part of getting my teeth clean so we feel so nice and clean afterwards. And what this polish is, is just basically a fine grit, like a pumice, that's gonna help smooth everything off. On your back teeth, you really want to make sure to do the tops of the teeth too. It's super important because this is where a lot of food, especially kids, can get stuck. So once you're done the polish, the next thing that we want to do is give our patient a rinse because they're going to have all this grit everywhere. They're not going to like how it feels. It's going to be kind of messy, so we're just going to grab our suction and we're going to give them a rinse. It would be helpful if I turned the suction on. Okay, at the end, usually there's two things that I finish up with. Floss and fluoride. So what we do is we floss first, make sure we got all that pumice out, that everything's nice and clean. And then what we're gonna do today is we're gonna paint on a little bit of fluoride varnish onto those teeth. Fluoride just helps to re-harden, re-strengthen the enamel, which is the hard outer structure of the teeth and make it less prone to getting decay, less prone to acid wear and erosion. And overall, it'll just help to strengthen our teeth. So I'm just gonna grab my piece of floss. And the same is how I show it on my video on how to floss. I'm gonna wrap it around my middle fingers. Have that little one inch gap and we're just gonna floss her teeth for her today. And 
And just like when I tell you guys at home, super important to have your hygienist go down through the gum net and go up one side of the tooth and up the other side of the tooth to keep it nice and clean. Okay, so the final step is after you've had your teeth cleaned, you've had them polished, you've had them flossed, is fluoride. So what we're gonna do is um, we use the fluoride varnish. I like it. I find that it goes on really easy. I find most patients don't mind it. It's a little sticky afterwards. It feels a little bit kind of tacky to your teeth. However, it's not the rinse, which I find gives a lot of people an upset stomach. And it's not those trays that you used to have to wear, the like dust trays when you were a kid, where you would have to sit there for a minute and you'd be drooling everywhere and you'd be biting on the little saliva ejector and it just wasn't a good time. So I have the fluoride varnish here today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up and then we're gonna put it on her teeth. The nice thing about it is that uh, it doesn't leave a whole bunch of poop everywhere. So I will usually give my patients the saliva ejector to just spit into if they need to or to just kind of like hold and suck and clean around the mouth any excess that they have. You can't rinse after, that's the one downside to fluoride. We actually want it to sit on your teeth and soak into it for about at a minimum 30 minutes, I think the manufacturers usually recommend about two hours, but at least 30 minutes after you've had your dental cleaning. So we're gonna open up this floor today and we'll paint it on your teeth. So it basically just goes on kind of almost like a nail polish. You just paint it right onto your teeth. And because it's sticky, we'll stick right where we want it. So I know there's a whole controversy about fluoride and whether it's good for you or not, but one of the things for your teeth that it helps to do is helps to re-harden and re-strengthen the enamel. So it's important to prevent decay and cavities. It's important for any kind of acid erosion, and it will just help to re-strengthen the teeth overall. All right, that's it. That's the cleaning. So we will give her the Slide ejector, and we can get any of that excess off. And we will sit her up. Hey, welcome back. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really wanted to kind of go in depth through what a typical cleaning looks like in the dental office. Yeah, after this, what usually will happen is the dentist will come in and we'll do a dental exam. So if you don't know what a dental exam should look like and you haven't seen my other video, make sure to check it out. I'll post the link here so that you can take a peek at what an actual dental exam should look like. And if not, if you have any other questions about dentistry, if you struggle or you're afraid of going to the dentist, make sure to check out my video on dental anxiety. Otherwise, make sure that you subscribe, hit that like button, ring the bell, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.